Mann. Hello YouTube, welcome back. We are finally getting back to building our airplane here, or working on the panel. Uh, so everything sat here for about two months or so, kind of tinkering around in the garage. Um, last night, actually I couldn't find this camera, so Wyatt is now uh, two years, was it two years, three months? Basically anything that I touch, he loves to play with, so the camera was in a very, very hidden spot. So yesterday, I did not record it because I couldn't find the camera, but you'll see I started to make my initial cut here uh, to fit this beautiful advanced flight systems panel uh, into here. So this cutout here is for the GPS navigator, uh, the IFD 410, which lives here. You'll notice the cage on the back side, it travels quite a ways away and does interfere with the sub panel. So basically I just held this over the top of this, kind of roughly drew some lines around the sides of it where I thought I would have to cut and then uh, have been enlarging it slightly from there. You'll see it is going to start interfering with this bottom part here. I will be removing this, adding a doubler, uh, basically following, following the plans. I think it's section 41 where they call out very specific instructions for how to do a doubler, how to do angle brackets. But I'm going to follow their instructions. I will still have these three rivet holes as it calls out. I think it calls for a minimum of three rivets to hold this bracket on. I'm going to add more than that though. I'll probably add a couple more staggered in here. But summed up, that is what I'm doing. I'm working on uh, reinforcing this cutout. And uh, yeah, we'll start putting this panel in the plane. starting to look like a uh, hippie pilot. I have to change the channel name. Um, anyways, working on the layout of the sub panel here, you'll see I have a uh, battery mounted in location, my transponder mounted in location. This is loose. Um, and then EMS is going to go on the back side. You can kind of see the layout of it there, but that's going to sit on the back side of the sub panel. Anyways, it's going to get crowded. I have the ACM going here. My remote audio panel, I think I'm gonna drop in here and have it sit kind of in there. So getting very, very tight. With this setup, since I went with the GPS navigator that did not have a comm radio, I ended up having to do two comm units. I'm gonna have two and I would like for them to be accessible from the front. I thought about kind of, this is not the comm unit here, but putting one on top, one on the back side, kind of sandwiching them. 
Uh, but then I worry about um, in the future if I ever have to do any kind of maintenance or anything, um, I want to have them in the front. So we're going to go inside and I will show you what I came up with. The, a custom fit part for this purpose here. Uh, so looking here, you're probably going to have to look sideways on your screen. You'll see where they call for the comm radio to sit right here. Again, I have two of them, so I want to be able to stack them. So, uh, you want to see someone's sewer? Kind of gross. Um, no, so going to the parts. <laughs> I came up with this part here. So, um, took the little comm units, and there's a left and a right. Uh, they each have their own hole pattern. Um, so you probably can't even tell on camera. And this is what I have. Uh, so the idea here, the bottom one will be able to screw down into the sub panel like normal. Uh, then over the top of it sits that guy. Uh, so it also will be able to screw down into the sub panel. And then on the sides, those holes are perfectly match drilled or matched up uh, with the model to fit screws. It should work really well. I'll show you real quick what it looks like on the actual uh, panel. Look at this. Amanda's going to come with me? Yeah. Going back to this original setup here. I am able to place both of the comm units here. You'll notice I did leave a little like relief cut, whatever we're going to call that. Uh, so I should still be able to get in and easily um, add on whatever, you know, put the little thingy <laughs> there and there and see able to get my fingers in there. We'll get to match drilling this and getting it installed. So yeah, I'm happy with it. I did chat with um, support over at Advanced Flight Systems asking if I should ground the outer shell of this. He said yes. So I either I'm going to run a little loop down and just kind of bond this one to the outside piece of that, which of course is tied to the airframe, um, or run it over to a grounding block. So that's done. Again, I, I'm pumped with that. Uh, being able to, to reach inside of there, it is very sturdy. Um, so anywho, again, this is one over here on this one on the side, right there, uh, which should give me enough distance to get that coax over the edge here and then get the back end of the uh, D-sub into the back of it. Moving on over, I changed my mind. I originally was going to put my remote audio panel directly in here and do a cutout slot, reinforcing angle, but you see here it's, it's very, very tight. I may be running into issues up underneath this backup battery, and that is already as high up as I could possibly get it. My idea now uh, that I stole online from a, another person's builder log is to uh, not put it here, but actually to put it on the bottom side. So remote audio panel will, will mount on the bottom. This uh, bracketry here, th this holder is a mirror image, it, so it's, it's symmetrical. So I should be able to, should be able to do all my, my match drilling here. I already know that it'll fit well here without interfering with this bottom rib. Uh, but then do all my match drilling, move it around to the bottom, it'll be riveted down, and um, that should work out well because over the top of that will be the ACM. Uh, so, anywho, uh, to maintain spacing, I went ahead and used these handy dandy high end gauge blocks from Amazon. Uh, super cheap, but very handy for times like this. Mass drilling now, so that's maintaining this nice and square and straight. I'll mass drill it, flip it around to the bottom side, and then rivet it on, and we'll continue from there. All right, garage is getting much messier. I feel like this pile is just getting bigger and bigger. I do need to, uh, <laughs> at some point, clean up this garage, but I'm getting to the avionics fans. I did go ahead and purchase two of these, oh gosh, what are they called? They're Noct Noctua Redux NF-P12-1700 PWM. And um, I'll be installing them here and here. You'll see, because of the, where I put the backup battery, I really can't put it too much further forward. I think it's still fine. Um, I'm not going to center it. I think it makes most sense to actually kind of favor to that side as it, when you look down the top there, uh, this side over here is much more flat. As you go further and forward, or further and further to the sides, it, it rounds quite a bit more. I think that's a good happy medium. Um, so my plan right now, I think I will, um, I have it right where I want it. My plan right now is to, I think, match drill two holes and then go to the back side. Uh, from where I will, this is a kind of a, a grill uh, that will live on the top part. It's not the final product. I think I'll make the, the grid a little bit larger. But anyways, I made a couple of things here. Um, I made that grill and I made this cutout template. And this cutout template, I took the measurements directly from uh, Noctua's website uh, to get the hole placement. And um, anyways, came up with this and this will allow me to also then make my perfect cut in the top of the, uh, the skin there as well as um, verify that my holes are in the right location. So I don't know, maybe I'll uh, 
Mass drill a couple holes, then Clico this on, then do the rest from the other side. I don't know yet. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, as far as cutting into this goes, I contacted Man's Builder Support. Uh, he gave me the go ahead to go ahead and uh, and poke some holes in there for these avionics fans. He mentioned that this is not a primary structure uh, to, of course, not go crazy and throw holes all over the place, but um, did say it's fine to do this without a doubler. So I'm not going to be adding doublers here. So anyways, let's get to it. Of note, real quick, if you saw this angled material here, that's going to go as soon as I'm done with this. That's only giving me a, a nice little space above the battery. I just didn't want to crowd the battery, get this mass drilled in location, only to have it interfere during installation. So that's just to buy me an extra sixteenth of an inch or so. Quick update, I have the handholds filled in. It will allow me to, number one, uh, have a nice flat surface on top, uh, but more importantly, number two, allow me to put in an LED strip along the bottom portion here. Um, I did leave the bottoms exposed there, I think that's fine. I have a couple of ideas floating, but uh, before this, if you were to leave the stock handhold in place, it actually would have interfered with the ability uh, to run an LED strip along the top. Um, so, I'm happy with it, it looks great. Uh, over the top will be a coating so you won't see it. The other thing that you'll probably see right here, um, it's just a couple of future proofing things. This one here I have lined up to where that front bar that comes in here. This would be nice and centered inside that bar in the event that I wanted to run any kind of wires in the future, I would be able to um, use that guy right there and feed wires up through the pillar. And then that there in front of it, that is uh, to fit the size of a USB-C cord and the event that I wanted some kind of a charger up top, phone charger, something to come through. I'll have it nicely hidden. I don't have it here, but I 3D, I 3D printed a part um, that would slide underneath the front bar and kind of snap in place and, and cover this and, and like finish it off nicely. So anyways, that's that. Let's keep going forward. Alrighty, so I just wrapped up getting the headset jack location finalized and installed. That's a 3D printed part that I made, um, designed and made with ASA, which should be a um, fine material to use here. I originally mocked it up with PLA, uh, but it fits really nicely. It, it matches the, uh, the profile well over the edge of the uh, whatever the spec support bar is. And the idea is I was able to run a conduit. That conduit runs all the way down to the left side. And if you recall in a previous video where I was running conduits really everywhere, one of the areas where I figured I'd run one just to be safe was I ran one right there that goes up and then into a little uh, kind of a little pinch point between that cross support bar and that side structure. Worked really well to get my um, headset jacks over there. Now, one thing I will mention, if you are going to do this, and if you're working with advanced flight systems, it's awesome having pre-made wires, but if you're doing this, ask them for, I don't know if they do this, so sorry Kyle if you guys don't do this, uh, but if, if I was doing this again, and I knew I was gonna be putting my headset jacks back here, I'd ask them for an extra, call it two feet to be safe on my rear headset jacks. And then either A, ask them to come unsoldered and do all the soldering there yourself, or B, plan on doing what I had to do here, which I know, I understand is risky because I'm creating joints in the wire, uh, but these came finalized, already installed with headset jacks on them, and you cannot run them through this structure. I was not able to run them through all the structure here just because they're, they're pretty big size, they're beefy. So the only way I was able to get it to the back was to cut them. One of them actually made it all the way 
and the other one was probably about a foot short. So you'll see there I have a little service loop. I uh, actually added a two foot section on one of those where one of them was just a hair too short. I think it was probably six inches, eight inches short or so. I just added two feet and then you'll see a little service loop spool there. So I did have to splice them together uh, being that they were already pre-soldered on and I knew that I'd have to extend them. I figured let's play ball, run the risk. So you'll see there, uh, I did splice them and then use solder sleeves on the internal wires and then on the outside um, that um, shielded wire I used quarter inch um, copper or shielding from aircraft spruce and then also solder sleeve that on. So put it all back together. This should work totally fine uh, but I do understand the risk here of adding these extra joints in here. Um, a more seamless installation would have been probably to have them not come with the installed headset jack heads and just do all that soldering myself which again would also kind of be a little bit of work um dang airplanes are so loud of note though if you are if you're doing a center console area thing here you're going to be plug and play all day long my understanding is you should be able just to just run those wires straight back to the back you're not going through tiny little grommets in the side i'll show you a picture of what it looks like with the seats kind of roughly in there uh, but it looks fantastic so i am moving on Alrighty, so this material is pretty cool. You probably already saw previously where I filled in my handhold holes. You may be seen on camera, but I have a red, I think it's a COB LED light, Cobb LED light, I don't know what it is. It's a dimmable LED light strip from Amazon, link in the description. This is the seal I'm going with. I did not, or the, uh, the edge strip that I'm going with. I did not come up with this on my own. Actually, I found this in a Vans Air Force RB14 thread. I'll throw a screenshot somewhere here. I'll put this on and then we'll see what the LED light strip looks like on camera. So I've got my power supply hooked up. You probably can't see it on camera. It is only supplying power to my light switch area itself. You'll see no screens in there, uh, but you'll still get the same idea of what it'll look like. But there you go. Pretty snazzy. Uh, pretty cool, especially with this uh, the seal, the way the bulb hides that LED strip that's hidden inside of there. Um, pretty neat, and I'm very happy with how that turned out. Pretty cool. I did have to trim around right there where you'll see that wire kind of dodging across and going under. It also sneaks under the support structure behind the panel. Um, so yeah, other than that, the panel fit pretty well in here. I do have to do some more adjusting. This next time that I take the panel off, I will trim those sides down, touch up the paint, and move on. It's the same paint that I used on the interior here. I just added a clear layer of matte. I think it's called, um, it was called Dead Flat by Rust-Oleum, so it shouldn't have any kind of a glare or anything inside. But it looks pretty cool. Alrighty, so I'm going to end the video here. Next video will involve most likely getting the uh, actual top portion riveted on here and getting wiring installed and all that stuff officially installed for good. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or you just want to say hi, say hi down in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. Adios.